Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the official T's study guide, version 7, 2025. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when you and I are working together. Today is our lesson number 14. Lesson number 14, not 13. We are on page number 106. On that page, there are five practice problems which you see there at the bottom of the page. Today we'll do problem number 3, 4 and 5. So let's get going. Number 3. It's a very straightforward, simple problem. Here's how it goes. We are told that the patient has a fluid intake patient has a fluid intake of 1800 milliliter on Monday and 2350 milliliter on Tuesday. We are further told that the total fluid outtake and yes outtake will have two T's one T for the out the other one for the take outtake total fluid outtake in the two days in the two days was 1775 milliliter the question is very straightforward the question is what was this net intake is net intake this is how much his intake was on Monday 1800 milliliter on Tuesday he had an intake of 2350 milliliter we are further told that during the two days he had a fluid outtake of 1775 milliliter what was his total intake go ahead do it yourself pause the video and do it yourself Let's see what we can do, shall we? So here we have the intake. We can add up the Monday and Tuesday to find out what was his total intake. That's a zero. That's a five. Eight and three is eleven. That's one. Carry one. That's a four. So it looks like his total intake for the two days was four thousand one hundred and fifty milliliter. His outtake was this. What we have to do is subtract, and we'll have the net intake. So that's a zero, so that's going to become 10, 10, 10 minus, minus 5 is 5, and that becomes a 4, 4, we're going to borrow one, that's 14 minus 7 is 7, and that becomes a zero, so that becomes a 10, 10 minus 7 is 3, and that's a 3 now, 3 minus 1 is 2. 2,375, what was his net intake? That was number 3. This is number four, shall we? Number four tells us that we have a recipe that calls for three-fourths of a cup of flour for one batch of cookies. Apparently we are making cookies and the recipe calls for three quarter of a cup of flour for one batch. The question is this. How much flour is needed? How much flour is needed for one and a half batch. That's all. We're not going to make one batch, we're making one and a half batch. How much flour do I need? Go ahead, do it yourself. Pause the video. I'll give you two seconds to be able to pause and unpause the video. Let's see what we can do. So, 
we know one batch calls for three quarter of a cup one batch needs three quarter of a cup of flowers if that is true if one batch needs that much then that implies that implies that half a batch half a batch would need half a batch would if one batch needs that much flour then half a batch would need half of this amount half of that amount makes sense we want to make one and a half batch well there we go we're almost done if we add up the two figure one batch and half a batch that's one and a half batch would need the sum of these two sum of this two is three quarter this is three quarter right here write it down as three quarter plus this amount one half don't do, don't try to do anything right now leave the bloody thing alone just rewrite everything the way it appears three quarter and one half times three quarter that's all now we worry about adding them as you can see when we multiply this this fraction here this is going to give us one times three is three and the bottom we're going to end up with two times four which is eight here we end up with three eighths but that's no bloody good because we here we have a four we can add this quantity and this quantity because this quantity has a denominator of eight and this quantity has a denominator of four the way they sit there right now we cannot add them they have to have the same denominator somehow some way we have to convert this four into an eight how do we do that it's very simple take the first number and multiply top and bottom by two if you multiply both top and bottom by the same number two over two two over two is one multiplying three quarter by one does not change the quantity it's still three quarter do you understand so now we have it so this this boils down to one times three is three and two times four is eight and this boils down to two times three is six six eight there you go we are done six eight and three eight that's nine eight and nine eight can be written as i know i should have been going the other way around that whole thing is nine eight and since nine the numerator is bigger than the denominator we can't leave it like that we'll have to express that as a mixed number so let's pick up from here so 9 8 9 8 can be written as 8 8 and 1 8 you see 9 is bigger than 8 and 8 8 is 1 so the answer is we need 1 and 1 8 cup we need 1 and 1 8 cup of flour to be able to finish our culinary masterpiece which is one and a half batch of cookies yum this is number five that is dream come true number five number five we are told that out of 1955 kids out of 1955 students, one thousand two hundred and twenty-five take bus. Here's the question. The question is approximately what percentage approximately what percentage of the kids take bus? And it is, it is asking for approximate. So don't turn, uh, don't uh, don't turn your life into a uh, into a misery. Don't make it into a miserable uh, work here by trying to do the exact cal precise calculation. Nobody's asking for it. They're looking for approximate. And even if the bloody thing does not say approximate in the T's, you can always approximate. Nobody is looking for the exact answer. Nobody is looking for precise answer. Your job is simply to be able to recognize. The right answer among the four and as long as you're able to do that by doing approximation you're fine because the answer choices are never very close to each other answers were always far enough apart where even if you approximate a little bit you should have no trouble being able to recognize the right answer because they are so far apart go ahead do it yourself i'm going to get out of the frame pause the video and do it yourself let's see what we can do so, 
this is how many kids take bus 1225 out of this many 1955 and that is going to give you the percentage if you try to do the work exactly where it appears as I told you before this is a lot of tedious work tedious, tedious calculation for no good reason do you understand there is no need there is absolutely no need to be goody two shoe let's approximate we're going to approximate it by pretending that, 12, that the top is about 1200 and we're going to approximate bottom we're going to pretend that the bottom is approximately 2000 now this is where we need to pause for a second okay listen very carefully we're going to pause here for a second for a little pep talk approximation is fine and dandy you should approximate actually it's a good idea to approximate approximation is fine and dandy but if you're going to approximate you must you must at all time be fully cognizant of whether you are underestimating or overestimating you cannot approximate like a wild uh, wild thing with no idea at all as to which way you're going you must have a good idea well, am I, I am approximating but am I in the process of approximation am I underestimating it or am I a little bit overestimating it let's see what we're doing here as you can clearly see the actual number is 1225 and we're using it as 1200 so because we're making the numerator smaller we are underestimating correct answer whatever it is it's going to be slightly more than what we come up with that's one reason the second reason is that the denominator the actual number in the denominator is 1955 and we are using 2000 if the denominator gets larger the whole thing gets smaller so we are underestimating, uh, underestimating it for two reasons we are underestimating it for two reasons for, because first of all we are dividing it by a bigger number which lowers the value and the top is more than before so we are going to come up with the answer and once you come up with the answer had it been a real exam you will just pick one answer choice that comes closest to it that's all Let's divide top and bottom by 10. If you divide top and bottom by 10, the 0 is going to go away. And that leaves you at 120 over 200. Let's divide top and bottom by 2 now. Why 2? Because I was trying to make the bottom into 100. If somehow if you can turn it the bottom into 100, then that's what percent means. Approximately what percent? Percent means out of 100. So if you can convert the bottom into 100, we're done. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 120 divided by 2 is 60. And 200 divided by 2 is 100. There you go. The answer is it is approximately 60%. Approximately 60% of the kids take bus. And to be more precise, a little over 60%. If you do it out in the calculator, if you do it out in the calculator, I guarantee you the answer is going to be slightly over 60%. Maybe 61%, maybe 62%, but it's not going to be 65 or 67 do you understand? It's going to be around 61-62%. Pick one answer choice that comes closest to it. And if there, are, there happens to be two answer choices out of four, which are, is very, very rare, but if there happens to be two answer choices there out of four, where one answer choice is slightly less than 60% and one is slightly more than 60%, it is for that reason that you should be cognizant whether you were underestimating or overestimating. We were here underestimating. Therefore, the correct answer is slightly more than 60%. Do you understand? That was the end of the sermon. Amen. We'll meet again tomorrow and we'll continue this thing. Okay? Bye now.